Hey game devs, in this video I'm gonna cover text, input, and buttons. If you're already really familiar with those, go ahead and just hit the thumbs up button and continue. But if you're trying to figure out how to add text, how to read inputs, or how to use buttons in your game, just give me about four minutes and by the end of it, it should all make sense. To add text to your game, you'll go to Game Object, UI, and then choose Text-Text Mesh Pro. I can zoom out to see the text on my full canvas, use the middle mouse button to move around, and I can drag this text object all around, or even resize it, scale it to fit my entire screen, change out the text value, and crank up the font size so that it's nice and big. Whatever I wanna do, I can modify right in here, but if I wanna change things at runtime, I need to write some code. So let's see how we can write code to update this text while we're playing. Let's take a look at this simple text updater script. It has the single job of updating our text value to match the number of seconds our game has been playing whenever our text object is enabled. And if I try that in the editor, let's expand out the text mesh pro text and press play, you'll see that my number of seconds will show up right here in my text and that'll be the value there. If I disable and re-enable my text, I get the new value for how many seconds we've been running our game for. Now let's add a button to refresh that time whenever it's clicked. To add a button, we go to Game Object, UI, and choose Button Text Mesh Pro. I want my button to be big, so I'm gonna dock it to the top right corner and set the height to 300 and the width to 300 as well. And then I'm gonna change the text by expanding out the button and selecting the Text Text Mesh Pro object underneath it. I'll make this a refresh, and then I'll scale it up using the font size auto option and crank up the max value there. Looks like it's getting to about 85, and that seems good. If I press play right now, my button will look like it's clickable. I can click on it and make it change visually, but it won't actually do anything. So I need to stop playing and then go select my button object. If I scroll down to the button component and make sure it's expanded and open, you should see an on click section and it should have a nice empty list here. And this is where we're gonna tell it what we want it to do when it's clicked. To do that, we're gonna have to hit the plus button and it's gonna ask us for the object that we want to run code on. We wanna run code on this player's name text right here. So I'm gonna drag this text object over here and click on the function objects. This will show me all of the components on that object, including my text updater and all of the public methods on there. Now my on enable method isn't public and I really don't want to call an on enable method from a button. Instead, what I wanna do is go back into that code and make a quick refactor. By moving the time text code into a public method named refresh time text and just calling that an on enable, I can now add that as an on click listener. So I choose my drop down, choose text updater, and I can find refresh time text right here. Now when I press play, I'll be able to click the refresh button and call the code to update my UI element whenever I want. You can see every time I click, it updates. You can add more than one listener to your buttons as well so that multiple things happen. In this example, I've just made it so that my refresh text will set to inactive as soon as I click. Not very helpful, but you get the idea. When you're using buttons though, it's also important to know that you don't have to add your listeners in the inspector. Another very common way to do this is using the add listener method. Here I've changed the text object. You call add listener on the button and the button is just assigned to the text updater. This will do the same exact thing, just make sure that you call remove listener so that you don't accidentally double add listeners and have a method get called twice. Now let's take a look at input. Let's say we want our player to put their name in. That can't be too hard, right? Well, we'll go to game object, choose UI, and again, choose input field, text mesh pro. The first thing I'll do is resize this so it's a lot easier to see. I'll choose anchor and we'll scale and stretch it along the bottom, set the site to or the height to about 100. And then we're gonna scroll down, expand out the children here, and we need to select both the placeholder and the text. This is the placeholder text there that says enter text and the text when we start typing. We're gonna choose auto size on both of them and just make them go up to about a 72 so that I can see them. To read that input field, I can just add a reference in my script and then in my refresh time text that should probably be renamed, I can set the text to the value by reading the dot text property. Let's give it a try. Put in my name here is subscribe and hit refresh, there it is. Make sure you subscribe, let me know if you have comments or questions, and I'll see you in the next one.